Hello Virtual Pilots, I'm Andre Celesti and tonight we are going to talk about the Pimax Crystal VR headset and more precisely trying to answer some of your questions that were posted during our showcases, tutorial video and review. Ever since I got the headset it became my primary use for the long nights of gaming, flying in DCS World, Microsoft Flight Simulator and chopping flying cubes in Beat Saber. Since we published our previous videos about the headset, I gathered a set of questions from different users and I will do my best to answer them. Let me know if you enjoy this type of show and I will do my best to continue a QA on other topics that are in our interest here at How I Play. As we talked about the foveated rendering and how the process works with a crystal headset, one of our viewers asked if I noticed the low resolution rendering around the detail section with the quad views and foveated rendering on. My answer is no, I didn't catch a low resolution artifact like we would get with the OpenXR settings, but when switching to the quad view I do notice a big transparent square following my eyes, especially in a bright background like the sky. It's not something I find annoying, but it is there and I notice it. But when I say that, I mean I needed to seek it with my eyes and realize it was there. Another user was sharing his experience with the headset, a very subjective situation, saying that it seems that Pimax didn't factor in people with a high nose bridge. When he was using the headset, he gets tired after one hour and starts getting a headache. Well, I can only imagine. I'm really sorry to hear about that. I myself have a larger nose and I was fortunate to try the headset with both the default holding pad around the eyes and the comfort one. Apart from the comfort pad being a bit more itchy, as I said in my video review, I have no issues to report, but that's me. I would recommend you try the head strap. That will be your solution if you ask me, and Pimax supplies it as well. And another member kindly suggested to place a fan pointing at you while you operate with a headset. That may help as well. The cool air will improve your experience while using the headset for longer than one hour. Multiple users ask if it works with Steam. Yes, the headset is capable of working with Steam VR. We have our tutorial where you can find out all you need to know when setting up the device and what you can use it with. Then a user shares his experience with a crystal after upgrading from a HP Reverb G2. This is what he said. I had a 13900 Intel processor with a 4090 graphics card. Despite that, I did really heat up my room with full maxed out settings in DCS. But the clarity is definitely something else, a whole other level. With the DFR I'm getting on average a 90 FPS. This is on max setting. Well, all I can say, try not to heat up your room too much, but yeah, I agree, the clarity is something else. A common question is how long can you play before you need to recharge the battery? I use the headset for 3 hours every time and never needed to stop and charge the battery, or even the need to switch the battery with the other so I can continue flying. What happens is while you set up your system, HOTAS and prepare your flight experience, the headset is connected and charging before you press the button to turn it on. These short pauses before you start are enough to maintain my battery high enough so I don't need to proactively replace the battery or wait to charge. Most of my sorties are around 2 hours, but I did my best to extend my time as much as I can so I can test if the battery needs to recharge during a decent playtime in DCS. I am happy to report that the battery lasted long enough. Another user's biggest concern about the headset was the price, saying that not only that the product is expensive, but also your system needs to be upgraded with the latest GPUs and processors and the costs are too high. I have no doubt that many of you think the same, but as I showcased it, you don't need a $2000 GPU to use it. I link my system specs in the video description and my review will explain that performance wise is actually better than my older headset that doesn't provide this clarity and definitely doesn't have all the features that the crystal provides. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. If you want to take full advantage, your system needs to be beefy enough to process everything. Otherwise it will work, but you will miss out on all the crystal quality view it can offer, and that's why you pay for it. 
but for those of you who are really interested in the Pimax Crystal experience, remember, we got multiple promotions through our channel using our referral link and apply our promo code so you can get a decent discount for the Pimax and other products. Links are in the video description. Many other questions are also answered in our tutorial video and review posted here on the channel. We also have some exciting news on the horizon from our VR partner. Keep your eyes peeled on their YouTube channel at Pimax VR for a major announcement on the 15th of April at 2 pm Pacific time. It seems that something big is about to happen. We will be watching on our Discord together with members of our hip crew, so stay tuned for more updates. So until then, I am Andre Celesti, reminding you to fly safe and I'll see you next time.